Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show. Well, Costello, we're going to do a murder mystery. We'll need a leading lady. Now... How about that blonde actress you're so crazy about? I ain't going with her anymore, Abbott. We had an argument about mustaches. She likes them and I don't. You mean she wanted you to grow a mustache? No, I wanted her to shave, shave hers off. I... <laughs> I thought she was rather pretty. She has such pearly white teeth. Yes, and when we broke up, I asked her for a picture of her face so I could remember her lovely teeth. Well, did she uh, give you the picture? She didn't have a picture, so she gave me the teeth. I... <laughs> well, we've got to have a leading lady. Now, wait a minute. How about that little brunette actress? No, I'm mad at her, too. We had a date at Hollywood and Vine last week, and she stood me up. D- did you tell her off? I'll say I did. I said, how dare you stand me up at Hollywood and Vine? And she said I was, she was sorry, and now we have an understanding. You have? Mm-hmm. Now she's going to stand me up at Sunset and Vine. <laughs> Russell, I think this idea for doing detective stories is, is going to be a flop. You know nothing about detectives. Well, my whole family were detectives, Abbott. My Uncle Tom was smart as a whip, but they threw him off the force. Why? They found out there weren't very many smart whips. I... <laughs> I don't believe that. Why Why did Tom really get thrown off the force? Well, if you must know, he was taking bribes. He used to put the money in his shoes, and the chief found it out. If he put the money in his shoes, how did the chief find out? He got 18 inches taller the first week. I... <laughs> Who else in your family were detectives? Well, my twin uncles, Gus and Billy. They joined the force on the same day. Billy's, uh, Billy's first assignment was to find a gorgeous secretary who had stolen a million dollars from her boss. What was Gus's first assignment? To find Billy. Uh... <laughs> were any of the other Costello's detectives? Yes. Two of my cousins, Bert and Harry. They were working on a case at the racetrack. They had to find a gang that was doping horses. A difficult case? Oh, very difficult. Difficult, eh? Yeah, very yeah. difficult. Bert and Harry disguised themselves as a horse and slept in the stables. One night a guy came along and jabbed them full of dope. What did they do? What could they do? They came in third and paid 280. <laughs> well, never mind that. What is your uh, Sam Shovel story for tonight? It's one of my most famous cases. I call it the case of the boy named Tony, whose mother kept him locked in a closet, or Tony's home permanent. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Well, let's get on with the case. And now, we present the adventures of Sam Shovel, Master Detective. Brought to you by Army Surplus Sales. And here is today's radio special. Something no housewife should be without. Yes, today you can buy four dicks. So, <laughs> rush over to Army Surplus Sales and buy four dicks. <laughs> Bring it home and surprise the little woman. <laughs> and remember, when you buy, insist on the genuine four dicks. Do not accept March Field. <laughs> and now, for the adventures of Sam Shovel, Private Detective. <laughs> I'm Sam Shovel, private detective. I'm sitting in my little office down by the waterfront all by myself, playing gin rummy the hard way. The hard way. Without cards. (laughs) I've been playing for two hours, and I owe myself $900. And I'm worried. I know I'm not good for it. Being a private detective isn't a bad racket. I remember the first day I opened this detective office. I threw a party. What a party. I bought a carton of beer, and as I was carrying it up the stairs, I tripped. All the bottles were broken. Beer was leaking all over me. Everybody cheered and congratulated me. I had broken my first case.
As I'm sitting here now, I feel something creeping up behind me. It's Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicides Bureau. The man who single-handed caught Babyface Nelson, Babyface Cooper, and Babyface Brown, which wasn't too difficult considering they were all babies. <laughs> Detective Abbott speaks. Hello, Sam Shovel. My, it's dark in here. Why don't you pull up the shades? Okay, I will. Sam, it's still dark in here. I know. I don't have any windows. <laughs> Just look at your office. An old herring barrel for a chair, a soapbox for a desk, a rug made out of old newspapers. Yes, and you may not believe this. Lieutenant, five years ago I started out with nothing. ceiling. Just missed killing me. How could a bullet shot at the ceiling hurt you? If I happened to be sitting on a chandelier, I would have been killed. <laughs> Shovel, what made you go into this dangerous business? The prizes. There's prizes in the detective business? Sure. If I'm lucky, I may get to be Ellery Queen for a day. <laughs> Awake. <laughs> what was that? Oh, just the backfire of an automobile. Help! 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 What was that? That must be one of the tires yelling for help. <laughs> that, that sound came from the building next door. Who occupies it? The Universal International Overseas Interstate Trucking Company. Where do they ship to? Glendale. <laughs> We'd better go next door and investigate. It may be the killer. Where will I get my weapons? My gun, my blackjack, and today's newspaper. Today's, today's newspaper is a weapon? If I miss with the gun and the blackjack, I'll show him the headlines in the paper and he'll worry himself to death. <laughs> Let's go. Help! Help! Hey, look, look. There's a man on the floor. He's in trouble. What happened, mister? Oh. I've been stabbed. They put a bullet in my shoulder, a dagger in my back, and all my ribs are broken. Oh. Does it hurt? Only when I... <laughs> Does it hurt, mister? Only when I laugh. I... <laughs> Come, man. Tell us who stabbed you. It was... It was... <coughs> this, this man is dead. We've got, to... <laughs> We've got to find out who the killer is. I know. I'll ask Herman the stool pigeon. He'll sell us the information. What makes you so sure he will? For money, Herman would sell his own grandmother. How do you know? I bought her three times already. <laughs> I left Lieutenant Abbott and went looking for Herman the Stool Pigeon. Then I made a trip to the Los Angeles waterfront, the toughest part of town. What a tough neighborhood. The only place in Los Angeles where the pedestrians knocked the cars down. <laughs> I was scared. Plenty scared. My throat was so dry I could feel the seeds in my Adam's apple. <laughs> I drew my trusty revolver. I didn't know whether to put it in my holster or in my pocket. And I decided to check if the gun was loaded. I held it against my head and pulled the trigger. <laughs> Putting the gun in the hole in my head, I started for the docks. <laughs> so 
Suddenly... <laughs> suddenly I heard a voice. Psst, psst, psst. What are you like that for? Sam. What? It's me, Detective Abbott. It's dark. I can't see you. I'm here on the wall. On the what? Wall, wall, wall. I can't hear a word you're saying. There's a dog barking someplace. <laughs> I looked up. Waterfront Lil was standing beside me. She was more beautiful than ever. She spoke. Hello, Sam. Hello, Miss Waterfront. <laughs> Call me Lil, you gorgeous hunk of man. Okay, Lil, you gorgeous hunk of man. Uh, <laughs> Never mind the romance and Sam. You've got to find out if she's a smuggler. Okay. Be, be subtle. <laughs> Don't let her know you're after information. Okay, take it easy. All right. Okay. Lail, are you a smuggler? Sam, <laughs> I'll tell you if you promise not to turn me over to the police. Now promise you won't turn me over. Why should I turn you over? You can't look any better on the other side. <laughs> well, Lil. I got you at last. I'm taking you in. Oh, no, you're not. You'll never take me alive. Quick, Sam, put the handcuffs on her. <laughs> she got me. I'm shot. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Quick, Lieutenant, call an ambulance. We'll take Sam to the hospital. No, no, not the ambulance. Sam, don't, don't, you, don't you want to go to the hospital? Yes, but I ain't riding in no ambulance through that Los Angeles traffic. A man can get killed that way. I'll walk. Quick, oh, get him out of here. Right down, boys. We'll have a curtain call by Abbott and Costello. Well, Costello, you certainly gave a brilliant performance to Sam Shovel tonight. Thank you, Bud Abbott. You're full of pep. Yes, sir, you, you certainly were effervescent tonight. Did you ever see me when I effervescent? <laughs> effervescent. Now I know what happened to Baron Munchausen's writers. We've got them! <laughs> Staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Conlon, Pat Costello. And our producer is Charles Vander. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody Good night, in Patterson. Good night. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. 